Well, I'd like to share a testimony. Um, I've had many, but um, all of them are usually related to animals. We've had many horses and dogs throughout our, our lives, and uh, we had one incident where we had four horses, and we were in a period in our life where we decided that they needed to have better jobs, bigger jobs than we were giving them, and so we made the, the decision to part with them. And so in finding a home, we were going to give them to some friends that own a large uh, guest ranch, and they lived in Wyoming, and we were here in California. So in order to have horses transport over a border, you have to have a veterinarian, qualified veterinarian, come out, test the horses, um, and then um, once they pass this test for what is called Coggins disease, that they do not have it and do not test positive, then they're able to board the transport and go on over. Well, it was very important for our horses to make this transport early in the summer because they were sort of city boys and uh, they had to acclimate to Wyoming into new territory, have their feet spread, have their diet change and all of this to get used to uh, being acclimated in the mountains, the high altitude and be ready for the winter. So we were um, on a schedule. So we called our uh, veterinarian that um, you know, would test the horses and he came out and he tested these horses and he called back that night and he said, um, this was uh, probably late that night, it was a Thursday, and he said, Mrs. Fleming, I'm so sorry to tell you, but Roland, uh, your, one of your quarter horses, has Coggins and I'm legally supposed to put your horse down immediately. And, uh, but I, I tested him twice, he tested positive twice, but I am gonna wait until the morning and then I will come back again and if he does have Coggins, I will put him down immediately then. And he said, but I suggest that you pray about this. And I said, well, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And so he hung up and I hung up and my immediate thought was actually very clear. I didn't have a panic, I wasn't, I wasn't fearful and it was because I had been studying the Christian Science Bible lesson that whole week. And there was so much good information, good data, about what God's creation is. I believe the lesson was on life that week. And there was so much about what God's creation is as perfect and spiritual, and how his, his I was thinking specifically about this horse, Roland, that his being was created in the image and likeness of God and therefore he is not going to be physical, he's not going to be material, but all the might and the majesty and the love and the, and the strength and grace and beauty and all of the things that he expresses as a magnificent horse, as a magnificent reflection of God his source were just flooding into my mind. And I also attribute this to some studying that I had done um, in regards to the children of Israel and on their quest um, of 40 years in the, in the wilderness, that the lesson I was getting from that studying was that, their, that the, the progress was made in their response time. It started out in their early days and years where there was a lot of whining and a lot of complaining and a lot of fear. But then when they kept seeing over and over again examples of God's strength and His power and His availability and His presence, they just were having more and more quick healings and their complaining stopped. Pretty soon it turned into not complaining and whining, but oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what God is going to do. This isn't an obstacle, this is an opportunity. So when I was thinking about Roland and his existence, I thought this is an opportunity for me to see really clearly and send him off on this trip this way with who he really is and who all these other horses, not just ours, but all the horses on the ranch are and all the horses in the kingdom are. So I worked along these lines and without fear, just the, the confirmation of his power and grace and goodness that all came from God's power and grace and goodness and nothing could change it. So um, the thoughts were clear, they were powerful and they were steady. So the next morning I get a call from the vet and he said, Mrs. Fleming, and this was after quite a long pause where he was trying to find the right words. He said, I can't believe it, but your horse is perfect. Your horse is healthy. He tested negative. And he said, uh, I, I, I can't believe it a couple of times. And I said, well, you told me to pray about it. And he said, well, I guess I did. And uh, he said, and it, I guess it worked. So then he said, but we now have another issue. And he said, because I reported this disease to the government, the authorities are coming in on Monday morning and they're going to shut down the whole ranch and they're going to start testing every single horse starting with your four 
and uh, they're going to be closing down the ranch for at least two to three weeks, which means that your horses will not make that transport, and I'm so sorry. And that kind of wrecked it for the whole summer because then the horses probably wouldn't be able to go. But the first thing, again, I was prepared, and we'd already seen just obvious evidence of God in control. I said, well, you know, the same God that healed that horse is also the same God that controls the government. And there was a long pause, and he said, well, I don't know about that. All I know is, is that they're coming in on Monday. I've been through this my whole veterinarian years in life, and they've never backed off before when something like this is alerted. So I said, well, we'll pray about it. And he hung up, and he agreed. So that, I had that whole weekend, and I told my husband about um, the situation at this point and how we'd had this wonderful healing with Roland and how we had more work to do for our horses to get on this, on this, this trailer. So we worked through the weekend, and it was the same thing. One God, one mind, one power, and there weren't a lot of minds and there weren't a lot of bodies running around making separate decisions, but everything was under that one harmonious government, and it was good, and it was going to be operating with just truth and, and harmony. So Monday morning rolls around, same thing, I answer the phone, long pause, the vet says, well, Mrs. Fleming, I don't know what to say. I've never seen this in my entire career, but the government's called it off. They're not gonna come in, they're not gonna shut the ranch down, your horses are free to go on their, on their trip. So it was just wonderful evidence for me of how um, this truth is present God exists, and he's good, and he loves us. And when we appeal to him in the light of understanding that matter is illusion, and God is spirit, and we are spirit, spiritual, then our lives will reflect that harmony. And I'm just so grateful that I've had this and many others that are evidence of, of God's great power and goodness.